Good morning. So uh, let's see where we were with uh, Snippet Pixie next. It's been a weekend and I have no idea what we got to last time. So, okay. I think we're all committed up by looks of things. Yeah, nothing to commit. Um, to do's, what to do's have we got? Internal, oh, there's some, that's some old stuff to do later. Yeah. Uh, so have I got anything in Snippet Pixie GUI that I have been working on? Okay, just the uh, debug stuff to be removed. That's fine. And what have we got there? Oh, that's all um, CLI stuff. Okay, right. Um, nothing immediate there. We weren't in the middle of anything. That's good. Okay, so what have we got so far? Um, we have, uh, let's see, um, we should... Yeah. Well, um, we'll start things up here. So we have, at the moment, if I remember correctly, we've just implemented... Um, add snippet and a way of testing to see whether the daemon is up in snippet pixie GUI. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go in there and we'll get it started. Files dev so that we can play about with it while it's running. So I haven't got the daemon up. So there we go. It's saying Hey, what are you doing? Um, the daemon isn't up and running. So when I go into add, we've got this disabled and orange <laughs> as a as a highlight, um, literally, because that's the colour I've, I've called it, um, that you can't do anything. You're not going to be able to save anything. So if you try and put a snippet in and you try and hit that, nothing's going to happen. We're not doing anything. Um, and you see in the background, the way that we're doing that is we're doing a little ping um, over the bus to see whether the daemon is up and running. So let's get that up and running. Um, should we do that? Let's see if we can do that here. We'll do another terminal. Okay. Um, so if we go into command snippet pixie d. There it is. Um, let's just do a quick make. It should be okay. Yeah. Oops. I'm going to bring that up. And as soon as that comes up, within, well, within five seconds, that daemon message should go away. There it goes. And it stopped pinging here, which is good. So now, in theory, we can start adding snippets. Um, interestingly, I wonder, yeah, so we probably, what we need to do here is a couple of things. Um, one I would like to fix up, um, if I cut off the daemon again, I'd like to fix up this here and make it stretch with the full width. So I kind of want notices to be a consistent thing at the top there, because this is quite an important thing. It's telling you that there's something up and there should be like an area at the top of every screen that pops up and says, hold on a minute, <laughs> things are not quite right. Um, and I want it to be quite consistent there. Um, and then the other thing um, I was just thinking about is we probably don't have, if I bring up the daemon again, I have a feeling that if I do that, 
Yeah, okay. We've got some basic um, error handling here at the moment, uh, and we need to handle this better. So that ASD was the test one we did the other day, and it's come back and said, nope, um, you can't add um, a snippet with the abbreviation ASD um, because it already exists. But this is obviously not right. Um, it should get to the point where um, we have a nicer dialogue or an error notice that says, can't save, not doing anything, stop. Um, so, okay, so there's a couple of things there. Um, let's deal with, let's fix up the actual notices first, uh, make that more consistent and usable, and then we'll use it in the add snippet um, screen properly, because uh, at the moment it's a bit rough, I think. If I can look at it. So, okay. What we're going to do, um, let me move that there to make it a little bit easier for you to see. We have um, in the add snippet at the moment, it's using this screen component we've created. Um, and that is where we have a no connection notice. But we're going to want more than just no connection notices. We're also going to want things like um, snippet or, uh, you know, snippet already exists or whatever it is we're going to properly do as a response. Um, so I think what we need to do is in here I think what we'll do is we will just have a standard notice component or maybe notices notifications let me just notice and notices um, and we will have maybe a store of notices so that things like the screen which is always checking in the background is doing the default stuff to say hey um, is the debug server up and running. Uh, it can add a notice to the store and it will show up as will like add notice. Uh, so add snippet if it has a problem um, or any other thing, it can just create a notice. And if those notices have unique IDs, or some way of being found, we should be able to remove them from the store. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll keep it quite simple for the moment. I don't know. Then again, in most cases, if something's happened and it's a GUI app, you want something in your face that says, nope. Because this is not a web app. It is a GUI app. And I can use stuff like that, I think. Maybe I should be more careful there and not do like a web stuff. Where things. Hmm. Okay. Okay, 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and fix um, the display of this notice here. Yeah. So it's consistent with this. And then then I think I'll leave that and I'll deal with a better way of handling immediate errors in a more consistent GUI style, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so, okay, so let's think we've got at screen. So this is going to be a little bit tricky because this is a um, this is a piece of HTML that's quite deep in the GUI, GUI in the uh, the DOM as such, um, and it's been affected by different stuff at different levels in a page it doesn't know about. So we might need to put in some uh, extra CSS here to just to kind of populate stuff or maybe Maybe it needs to be brought down to the DOM quite a little bit. Okay, what have we got? So, div class screen. Potentially centered. And that's where the problem is at the moment. Centered is causing the issue. Is a global thing. We got a screen. No. Okay. I think what we need to do. somehow tell it to stretch. So I think we need to do a simple little override, but I'm going to test this. And let's make sure we've got there it is. All right. So that stretch is there. If I look at it, it should be. It won't. I don't suppose it will tell me. Does it tell you what? No. There's not a lot of flex info there. Okay, got the colors, nothing there. Yeah, okay. And if we go back to the ad, Can I make it stretch? Now I've got to remember. Oh, 
How do I do that? Maybe flex grow, but I'm just wondering whether I can do the shorthand. <laughs> oh, it's doing the column width, isn't it? Yeah, that's not good. All right, so that's changing that. That's weird. Okay. All right, we'll take that out. And we'll do. Can we do flex? Oh, because I'm doing. I'm gonna have, probably have to go look at the documentation in a minute. Um, so what does Flex Grow want then? Flex Grow. Well, that's rubbish, isn't it? It doesn't do anything that I want. So it's also not. Right, let's take this out. Help! Come out! Okay. All right, docs. I need to find a way. Um. Of. I don't really want that. That's fine. We'll get this somehow. Uh, CSS. And I'll search for stretch. Let's see what that gives us. Flex grow. I'm going to read up on that. And I think that's on the wrong axis. I don't know what flex basis is anymore. All right. Flex grow. So this property says the flex grow factor of a flex item's main size. Okay. Now this is row based, so that's why that's going to be wrong for me because I'm on column based and that would make it too tall. I want the item to do its thing. So I'm in the wrong place there. Yeah, this is the same again. Yeah, that's all on the main axis. Which is no good to me. So have um See also. Yeah, that's main axis, but I'm not interested in main axis. I'll have a look in a sec. Make sure. Uh, flex basis. Initial main size of a flex item is it's the size of the content box unless otherwise set with box sizing. Okay. Yeah, again, that's main. I don't don't want that. <laughs> okay. Back to the learning where everything is. All the names are wrong for me. I can never understand. Because I'm using column. All right. OK. 
Okay. Okay, none of this supplies because this is all main access and I want cross access, I believe, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so cross axis. Line south. Okay. Right, cross axis. Do I really want a mining? I want how okay. Aligning content on the main axis. Okay, that was all justify.
not giving me what I want. All right, it's the flex container. It's all stuff I don't need. Okay, this is the problem with the documentation here is that I'm not quite finding what I want. I want uh, maybe a raw. Where's the. I got Collins cookbook. <laughs> Yeah, I probably should have used grid. Right, okay. It was probably just a lion self. I had a premonition on that and then I never followed it through. Okay, um, 
Let's give that a quick go. I'll just start this up. I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to work, but it's worth a go. Um, just do P here. Line self. Stretch. I'll save that. Does it make any difference or not? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Fine. That's all I needed to do. I should have gone with my instinct because I had a feeling that it was going to be that. Uh, but I wanted to check um, and I shouldn't have. Okay. So uh, that was quick and simple. Um, we will commit that. That's the bundle, that's fine. Okay, ensure uh, no connection notice stretches across screen. Right, uh, so the next thing I wanted to do was handle errors better. So this ASD, um, oh, I need to put the uh, daemon back up and running so we can get that message. So when I do that, we're getting this JavaScript um, notice. I don't really want that. I want a proper dialogue if I can. Um, so we're going to have to see how, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to need to see uh, if I can do that with whales. I believe it has a dialogue. No. Dialogue. Okay. Message dialogue. So for Linux, I've only got these top three things here. Apparently I can't adjust the buttons. Um, so I'm only going to get OK or Cancel. I suppose it depends on what type of dialogue I'm doing. Um, 
title of the dialogue and type. Question info doesn't tell me what else. I guess I'll get an autocomplete on that. Oh, there we go. Type. Error. Okay. We'll try that. We're going to try and throw an error dialog when we get an error back from add. So Basically this. Um, but we can only do type, title and message. Okay, let's give it a go. Uh, message dialogue. So we are hmm. this is when we're going to realize that I shouldn't have moved that service file. Um into an internal package because I'm going to want to do different, do different things on response. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I can do it here. That's fine. Okay, uh, so this is um, in the GUI. Uh, we've got um, where are we? Down here. We've got an app.go um, and this is um, basically bound to the app object and it's all these functions that we can call. And then in the main um, add A snippet screen. When we hit the um, save handler button, which sounds wrong now, um, it calls go main app and add snippet. So it's calling the back end um, add snippet function. Um, and it's passing in the abbreviation and body um, and get either getting back a good result or catching an error. Um, so the first thing I want to do is change these handler names because I don't like that. I don't know why I did that naming scheme actually. I prefer to do the other way around. Handle, cancel. I like it to be a action as such. Handle. Cancel. And save. OK. Then I am going to
So this is the interesting bit, because we want to handle... Well, I guess there's two things going on here. When we call... Um, when we call the service and say, hey, add a snippet, we're going to get back potentially good data or bad data. So we could actually just return a good result. Or it could be just a yay and nay, and then the front end refreshes itself accordingly. I don't really need the snippet to go all the way back to the front end. It would be safer if the front end said, oh, that's good. Oh, now I'll go back to the main screen. And re-get all the snippets to display. Hmm. Okay, let's try that. What we're going to do is we're going to catch um Going to catch a new snippet here, potentially, or an error. And then if the error is not equal to nil dialog. Otherwise, turn true, and here we will return false no matter what. So we're going to return a boolean. Oops. We don't care about that, to be honest. So we can done that. And then we'll do One sec. But we do that. Let's just test this works. So in the front end, um, well, we don't need any of this catch stuff anymore because we're guaranteed a boolean back. In theory, it'll all go pear shaped otherwise, won't it? So what we can do really strip this back and we'll do um const 
uh, saved is equal to, and we'll do an await, which means we need to make this async. And I think we'll be okay with the call. That might, that should be okay, I think. On an async. Um, and then we'll do if saved. Otherwise, we're just doing nothing. Ah, okay. And why is that? Right, okay. Okay, should we try that? I think we've got everything there. So the app upside of thing with the go sign is going to go call the dbus it's going to potentially get back an error and will return false if it doesn't it returns true um, the handle save will then if it's saved it will pop back to whatever screen was beforehand uh, otherwise it will stay where it is because we're going to have a dialogue there. Are we mixing concerns there though? Hmm, well, let's try it. Yeah, I thought that might go away. <laughs> too, ma too much has um, changed there. Let's try again. Okay. Uh, this is probably not happy. I'll get rid of that. So we do add, um, if we do ASD, yes, it does nothing. Have we got a wibble? Let's see. We might have actually. Okay, so that worked in theory. Okay, I'm going to kill that off for a sec. And then we're going to work on the message dialog. So here, um, So the issue here is translations. We don't have any translations in the daemon yet. So we don't really want to show the raw message. Maybe that's not the right way of doing things. Maybe what I should do is 
double it up to the front end and just have a wrapper function down here in the go for sending the dialogue, for creating the dialogue from from the JavaScript. So like a show error or something. Yeah, so I'm going to undo that on here. Get all of it, in fact. And then in the add screen. Where's that changed? About that, I'm going to call that back to and I'll save. If it's all good, we're just going to pop back. And then here, if we have an error, we'll do, well, hold on, let's um, save that for the moment. Let's actually build this then. We'll do it up here for the moment. So we're going to have uh, I have it just a show error. And we'll pass in message. That's a string. And for the time being, I don't think we need to return anything. Keep it as simple as possible. Potentially an error.
runtime, isn't it? Uh, runtime. Let's do the right keys here. Message dialog. Context. Well, that'll be. Huh. So I guess I just have to take that from the app. Uh, good point. I need to do this. So, a context. And then. Uh, I just need to pass in the options. Message dialogue options. And we know we need uh, a title, a type, title and message. title. The type, I guess that's going to be one time. Interesting. Is that right? Hmm. Why is it front end with the Okay? Title is title and message is message. Yeah, I'm not doing anything with the error either, so good shot that. We're just gonna do what we do. Display it, done. So at the front end uh, let's do Go main. Show error, it's not going to resolve yet. I'm going to have a title. I'll have that in the store as. Dialog title. No. And snippet. Hmm. This is where we're going to start wanting to do like we did with the buttons and have it things like add snippet title here, then add snippet error title. Let's do that. Let's change things up in a sec. Error 
title. And then the other next one could be Well, I'll just do the raw error at the moment. And then we'll have to have to do some sort of catching of what type of message it is and give us some better text. So Okay, so we've got show error there. We need to do some changes here. We're going to make this an object. And it's going to have title. Title error and in snippet. Okay, so the translation set up there at snippet title and add snippet error title at screen it's there now in the welcome screen we're also calling it that translation there add snippet title Yeah, I might have to standardize on that as a way of doing things, so I don't forget. Uh, okay, so this is going to be... It's not perfect, but it gets us started with having dialogues, hopefully, if it works. Um, so we've done a uh, passing the title and the error message. Okay, let's see what happens. Oops. Not in my normal shell there. Okay. So if we do add snippet, SD that we already know we've got, and we try and save. There we go. We're getting a normal dialogue not a javascript one in the window so i've got completely independent dialogue popping up and taking focus unique constraint failed snippets dot abbreviation okay that's fine it doesn't have any um styling but that might be because of my setup there. But if I add wobble, which I don't think we've got. Wobble instead. This should work. I should go back to the welcome screen. Okay, cool. Okay, so we now have an error dialog being popped up. I think that's okay as a to get us started. If I um, let's 
go down here. Let's go into the CRI. Oh, don't have to go there. Um, blue button. I look for. Hmm. I look for BBLE because that's going to have Ripple and Wobble in it. Oops. Let's do list. None. What? Oh, it would help if I uh, did that instead. Okay. Yeah, so we've got... Oh, all right, so that's the one I created earlier. That has... That. Yeah, I wondered why it failed. I've got what board I've got. Smart. And then ASD. We've got one as well. Cool. So... Should I leave them in or should I clean them out for the moment? I'll leave them in because our next task will be to list these snippets and we will want to delete as well. So we'll clean up via the GUI as a point. Okay. Um, I think that's enough for today. I need to get on with my day. So we've switched. So we've done a couple of things today. Fixed up the display of the uh, no connection. And then added a error dialog, which is called by the add snippet. Save handler. And I think that's enough for today. Get us started. I'll save that off. Hmm. Before I do that, actually, Do a make just so that all the assets and stuff are properly set up. Um, and if I go into command snippet GUI and just run the build bin snippet GUI, that's the actual thing. SD over. Yep, it's still doing its thing. And then at some point we're going to have to deal with these messages being like that. I have to sort of catch that. Um, produce a, a nicer message. But that's fine. Okay. So, add snippet error as native desktop error notice. Okay. Right, time for me to get on with my day. Um, so uh, until next time, thanks for watching and take care. Bye.